and welcome to Morning Scramble in Northern Arizona. Great to have you with us up here today. Um, about the World Cup, the U.S. lost to Belgium yesterday afternoon. However, this is an incredible event for the U.S. because we really made waves at the World Cup. It, it, soccer, quote unquote, has not ever really been our game. We play football. The world calls soccer football. Those are two different things. So I'd say the U.S. did pretty well considering. Uh, from now on, I hear that waffles will be called Freedom Waffles. <laughs> so. 51% of people in the world believe in God or an afterlife, about 25% don't. Many of those, and I couldn't get a percentage on this, believe in reincarnation specifically. Uh, and that's returning in another body after death, but it is still a predominant belief in many other countries. And uh, in recent decades, many Europeans and North Americans have developed an interest in it as well. With us, Melissa Bowersock, author of a new fiction book on reincarnation. Nice to have you on, Melissa. It was nice to be here. Thank you. All right, so your 13th book. 13, number 13, lucky 13, yes. Lucky 13. Yes. In some cultures, it is lucky, right? It is, yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, this is called Fleischer. House. Tell us a little bit about uh, what that book is about. Um, it's a. It starts out with a young woman who's visiting friends in Germany, and she finds a very, very small concentration camp, not one of the big ones at all, that's been turned into a museum. And she decides she wants to go tour it. And while she's touring it, she has a spontaneous past life memory of being murdered in that camp during the Holocaust. Ooh, intense, huh? Yeah. Yeah, pretty intense. Okay, where'd you get the idea for this, Melissa? Do you know what? I actually got the idea from a friend who had a similar experience, mm -hmm. was in Germany, and, and had a, a vision or whatever of, of people hanging inside a building. And uh, it just kind of churned around in my brain for a while. And, and, uh, Fascinating. Yeah. But this has kind of been a research subject of yours for a while as well. You're a certified hypnotherapist, and do you specialize in uh, past life regressions? Or? I do. I do, oh. yeah. I, I, I do all kinds of hypnotherapy, but I love past life regressions. I think they're just fascinating. How do you feel about them? I mean, do you, are they, you know, really authentic memories, do you feel? My opinion is they are, at least the ones that, that I've viewed. I've seen about 20 of my own past lives, and I see them as memories. Now, I have treated people who don't believe in reincarnation, and, and that's fine. You can still use the process and use it as a metaphor for whatever your issues are, because a lot of times you can go back to past lives and it can shed light on the issues in this life. Because you're still the same person right. theoretically inside, right. the same soul, but and just a different structure. You're yes, in. and if you haven't resolved an issue in a past life, you can still resolve it in this life. Uh huh. Yeah. So is uh, is Fleischer House sort of it ties that all that kind of idea in? Did you, know, you go with that? I, I actually once I got into the book, I actually did not pull in that thread of of tying up issues with past lives. But then, but then there there is that also because um, in the book, um, the woman has the chance to confront the one who killed her in the past life. So it is sort of a, a therapy kind of a thing. Yeah. Because why would you say people don't remember uh, past lives readily, except maybe in <clears throat> hypnosis? You know, I'm not sure why. There, it seems to me there must be some mechanism for that, that it would be confusing. I don't know. Children are very good at remembering past lives. And I, I had a friend tell me that one time when her son was about five, they were driving in the car somewhere, and just out of nowhere, he said, I'm glad you're my parents. And she said, well, we're glad you're our son. And he said, yeah, it was either you or the Japanese people. What? <laughs> How old was this kid? He was like five. Oh, you know. <laughs> You're the Japanese people. Yeah, so oh, I love it. Yeah. Well, and, and researchers are beginning to do research on reincarnation versus these children. There's a movie out, uh, Heaven is Real, about mm -hmm. a, a young kid who's it was very small. It was like three or something and had a, a near-death experience and came back with stories of like the afterlife. It actually mm -hmm. wasn't the reincarnation so much, but certainly moving on and, and you know running into those folks that uh, were in your life before. Yeah. So, you know, a little little different part of that. But is there any way to, and maybe this is probably what researchers are working on, any way to prove that uh, reincarnation would be viable? You know what? I don't know if it'll ever be proven because there's nothing 
physical to it. There's nothing that you can go and get something quantifiable. And bring it back. Yeah, something. but like anything, I guess any spiritual, any religious. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you prove a spiritual or exactly. religious experience or a theorem and stuff? I mean, yeah. it's uh, it's pretty tough. I guess that's that's the faith part where you have to yeah. take it on that, right? Well, you know what? Thinking about it, the, when they choose the Dalai Lama, they try to. You know, once a Dalai Lama dies, they immediately start looking for the next one, and 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 because they try to find him again before he gets too old and I think the current Dalai Lama they found when he was three or four or something and part of what they do is they take several objects and they lay out in front of him some of which belong to his predecessor and some that had nothing to do with it uh -huh. and he has to choose the ones that were his. Ah, and so that's kind of, I mean, that seems as close to proof as you yeah. would probably get. I would think so, yeah. I wonder if they've ever had a bad experience with their choice or if it's always worked out okay. I don't okay. know, I don't know. <laughs> so you, you've uh, based a uh, Fleischer house. Now that means, uh, what, Fleisch house, what does that mean in German? F Fleischer is butcher. Butcher, okay. So it's the house of the butcher. House of the Butcher. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I get it. The Nazi yeah. concentration camp. Right. Thing is, is it? Uh, does it end up upbeat? I mean, this is a pretty serious subject. Is it sobering? It, it, what would you say? Um, yes, it is sobering, and and I, I want to say that the book is not written in a horrific style. It's not something that I think people should shy away from because they're afraid of what it might have in it. Sure. Um, it does. I believe it does end up upbeat. Um, certainly it, it comes full circle and, and it resolves itself uh, in a way that I think most people would like. Right. Well, there's a lot of Holocaust stuff I don't think there ever will not be just because there should we should have Correct. reminders. We should be, you know, looking into it, exploring uh, the human connection to something that could happen like that, which is it still is I can't I can't even comprehend that it would. Did you what, what did you experience writing Fleischer House? You know what's interesting yes. and 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 I and I go into it in the book is the fact that we all have problems. We all have problems in our life. The, the, the starting out, the woman ha is just coming out of a divorce and she's still processing and everything. But then when she has this memory of being murdered, all of a sudden her day-to-day -day problems become very small compared to, to the murder. Uh -huh. And then as she goes into it more, thinking about this one life that was taken during the whole, during the whole of the Holocaust, and you've got this sense of mic macrocosms and microcosms and, and you know. Uh, and all kind of tying in and yeah, reflecting. Yeah, and, and giving everything other. perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, as a hypnotherapist, obviously the, that gave you the idea for, for Fleischer House. Other experiences that have really, let's say, knocked your socks off or been really powerful that you, even some of your own obviously have affected uh, you. I have. I have had some, some experiences that absolutely put me on my ear that I had to process for quite a while. Um, one experience that I had was being back in Palestine and seeing Jesus. Oh. And I'm not a religious person. But I've always believed in reincarnation. But at that point, after having that regression, I realized I either had to accept the reincarnation and Jesus or throw them both out because I couldn't separate them anymore. Fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, yeah. that pretty much changed your life. Uh, pretty much, yeah. But And also combining those two. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, history has it that Constantine, uh, around in the 300 BCs, took all the reincarnation references out of the Bible. Exactly. You know. Um, yeah. But although a lot of them are still there. If you because when the disciples asked Jesus about the blind man, they said, um, who, who sinned? Did he sin or was it the sin of his father? Well, if if, if he was born blind, how could he have sinned unless it was oh. in a past life? Oh. Yeah, so there's oh, still okay. some references so you, in there. You can sort of yeah. see that kind of thing. Well, I yeah. was going to ask you, you know, what makes you believe in it, but I'm kind of seeing the whole thing when you have experiences. And how about emotions? Do you feel real emotions when you're going through uh, an experience, a past life or You do. And that's, and that's the really, really strong point. What's interesting is some people see the past life in their mind. Mm -hmm. Some people hear it. Some people 
only sense it, but the emotions are huge, and and that's that's the whole thing. That's what gets you, and it's not just like watching a movie and zoning out. You feel everything emotionally connected to yeah. it, as you would with a, a memory that had happened in, in this life. For Absolutely. Instance. Absolutely, you know, I mean, a, a memory can make you cry, it can make mm -hmm. you laugh, uh, but you feel it on a visceral level. Your you memories do. from this life, so you're seeing that same thing as people react in in their experiences. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a fascinating thing. I mean, do you think that it's, well, I, in, uh, well, North America, but in the Western world, let's say, I think this has not been a particularly popular belief because of our Judaic Christian background and not connecting, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus with reincarnation. Most people have not. Right. However, other parts of the world, it's huge. Mm -hmm. But I think things are, are changing just slightly. But do you find that when you, when you talk about reincarnation that, um, some folks it's like talking about UFOs or something they kind of like ah, you know you know there's always a few but but not to that degree uh -huh. I think most people I think it's prevalent enough that most people at least know it's there and they understand it basically and uh, I don't think it's that threatening to them I really yeah. don't it can be combined as you're saying with yeah. other uh, belief systems in yeah that they've they've had so I mean thinking yeah. that we only get one shot at it that seems that seems pretty harsh. I know, because, you, you know, know, I'm having a struggle with that, Melissa. I have a lot more things to learn and do. Well, yeah, <laughs> don't we all? You know, otherwise we wouldn't be here, right? I know, and the clock is like running out. What? What? <laughs> not now. It's not too late. It's too late. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating. Well, again, Fleischer House, uh, 13th novel by Melissa Bowersock, very prolific, excellent writer. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thank today. you very much. It's always nice to be here. Can't wait to read Fleischer House, your newest one. And, of course, it's available worldwide. Yes. And okay. could I say about the book signing uh, oh, a week I'm from sorry, Saturday? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. When is that? Yeah, on the 19th uh, at the Crystal Lattice, which is a gift shop in Camp Verde from 10 okay. to 1230 p.m. Fabulous. You'll be there with I your book, Flasher House. I will. Melissa Bowersock, thanks for joining us. Thank you.